Welcome back to the Music Breakdown with your humble host, Phil Freeman. And today I have a co-host with me, Hi. my dear friend, <laughs> Elizabeth from the Charismatic Voices joining me to analyze Slaughter Trooper Veil's Viking. It's a one-take vocal playthrough done by their vocalist, Alex Terrible. We're going to be giving you all the juicy details today. Let's get to this. Here we go. Ooh. Water is good. <laughs> oh. Wow. Here we go. Wow. Okay. Two main types that aren't yes. presented, but um, let's go back to the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back yeah. to the beginning and yeah, yeah, talk yeah, yeah, about yeah. what it is so awesome that he did before he even started. Singing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Getting some hydration in your system—that is definitely yes. called for <laughs> for any type of vocalization, let alone yep. this type of stuff. So hydrate, gargle. Right. right. It's a good thing. Like it's so important because if this stuff starts to get dehydrated, like mm -hmm. not only is it more likely to get all kinds of swelling and whatnot and make yep. it more difficult to move things, but mm -hmm. also everything in there needs to have like a thin layer of mucus essentially so that it's easier when it smacks together that it doesn't stick yeah, together. Exactly. And the moment that you get dehydrated, like that stuff gets more sticky, more globby. Like who wants globby phonation? I've been there. It's not worth it. <laughs> it's not gross. worth it. No. Super, super gross. <laughs> um, so anyhow, hooray for not globby phonation. Yay. <laughs> Here we go. That's also really awesome. The, yeah, the gargle is a bonus. <laughs> oh, oh, I have a thought about that. All right, what's uh, up? So, uh, I've been talking with a bunch of harsh vocalists lately yeah. about uh, soft palate and really the, the back of the pharynx. Yes. Kind of where that gargling is happening. Yes. Right. It's very similar to a uvular R back yep. there. Um, and it's not, it's not typically what we would consider a source of phonation right you can like what he's doing right it's, there you can hear like it, it can be well i'll <laughs> this is what i say to students who are extreme mm -hmm. vocalists or are looking to put distortion on their voice mm -hmm. i say that you should think if you're if you want a very simple way of looking at screaming at least to get started think of it like snoring in reverse Right. Ooh. That was kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my sinus is open. That's amazing. Look at, look at, look at you. Look at that. That was fun. That was awesome. But that's a good, that's a good yeah. thing. Yeah. So it acts as a, like a reflector for everything that's going on within the larynx. So now the other thing, and I'll be talking about this throughout the video, with, and I'm sure he's going to be doing this. His It has to be paired with good phonation in the actual vocal fold. So, you know, I'm sure that's going to happen here. But yeah, the soft palate is a nice tool for you know, sub frequencies and getting all that stuff in there, yeah. all the distortion, that <laughs> type of stuff. I, so. It's so funny when I do that, if yeah. I, the immediate reaction is actually to like make the source lower when it's coming back out. Yeah. But if I try to make it the soft palate that's, that's rumbling. So yeah. it's, it's like the soft palate, soft palate's kind of flapping around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that actually, that gets into our, like some of the purely nasal kinds of screams and like yeah. you, that wouldn't be your normal primary source of phonation for harsh vocals. Right. But because the instinct is to actually go lower, yeah. you're trying to create that snoring sound that right. works. Right. So if I went like... There's a... <laughs> hey, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's so many elements oh, to man. it, but that's one of those elements. I know. Yeah. It's... My nose starts running. It's on yeah. camera. Oh, oh goodness. <laughs> do, we have a, do we have a tissue? Where is it? Ah. I got oh. a shirt. <laughs> you got a shirt. Hey, you know what? That's what. That's how we do this on the music breakdown. We don't yeah. care. We're like honey badgers. <laughs> Love that video. Yep. Oh my gosh, great reference. <laughs> All right, let's. Uh... Alex Terrible is a honey badger or a bear. Oh I my don't gosh, know. Yeah. honey bear. Yeah, honey bear. 
No, that's like, that's not, I, I don't think that works. I tried to combine that and it didn't work. Okay, we'll go back Let's to the Let's keep going. All right. I love how Hannibal's in the back, just like creeping. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, I didn't notice that. That is. Hello, creepy. Clarence. Yeah. Oh, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I want to keep going after this. I don't want to rewind okay. again, but like that, you know, it sounds so low, you know. <laughs> He's actually doing ah, 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 ah. He's floating around like an A3 huh. in his vocal folds. <laughs> and he's using everything else around it to get a different effect. So that's what it's, it's crazy because you can barely hear the actual phonation in the vocal folds, but that's how he's able to pull that out off with so much power because there's healthy compression that's going on inside mm. of that. Mm. Isn't that crazy? I was yeah. wondering if there was like yeah. real phonation underneath that too, yeah. because there's, it's the same kind, it's the same pitch I think that's happening in the music. And so yeah. because of the way it's layered, actually, it was hard for me to tell. Yeah. Is he really doing that? Or is it just picking up like a yeah. sympathetic resonance? I mean, obviously I could be wrong, but based on what I'm hearing mm -hmm. and, and the you know, what I've what I've heard with other other analysis and students, that's I've found that that's the best way to ensure that you have enough power and that the vocal folds aren't too loose. Because when the vocal folds are too loose when you're doing this type of stuff, it usually results in damage. Well, you know, over time. depends. Like yeah. a lot of people try to use the vocal folds to create this harsh sound, and, and that's not that's the case. like yeah, basically right. like there has to be a little bit of like pilometrics that's happening. Of right. Like, hey, if right. you're gonna do just a harsh with no phonation, yeah, like leave those vocal folds out of it. Yes. Don't get them tight at all. But if you're gonna right. do phonation and harsh, and sometimes yep. multiple sources of harsh. It actually is very complicated for the airflow. We don't actually have tons of research on it. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, and that's that's why we're what we're doing here. Yeah. All Trying right. To, yeah. I let I let you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm. Just really briefly, it almost sounds like he's approaching a, a tube and throat singing kind of thing where it sounds yeah, like... Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's why you get that extra, extra low rumble. Yeah, that, that type of thing. Yeah. And where you have essentially the false folds and the true folds going at the same time. Yes. So yes. I think, yeah, I, I hear what you're hear what you're talking about. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, like, that's what's so amazing. I love seeing stuff like this because when those subtones come out, that uh, 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 mm -hmm. that the, the tongue has such a big role to play in that and get that you know that that barking it sounds like uh -huh. a, he sounds like a rabid two hundred pound pit bull. Like, <laughs> like this, oh, it's amazing. Wait, what's the kind yeah. of dog he has? Um, oh, Is that uh, just a pit like bull? a bull, a bull. I don't know. It's I a know. massive dog. He has a it's hilarious a, Instagram yeah. that posts about the dog a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, I think he has two dogs. He has one dog in um in Russia, and he has a another dog in Florida. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, but yeah. Don't quote me on that. But they're beautiful dogs. <laughs> they're, and the one in Florida is like massive. Yeah. <laughs> Good boy. I feel like he takes inspiration <laughs> from his dog. Probably. I mean, and his pet grizzly bear, you know. <laughs> my God. Yeah, that's like my that's, that's like true. a dream come true for me. Like I like if well not a dream come true, rather. It's a dream of mine to have a pet bear someday. You can do it. I'm uh, you. Uh, you might have maybe, to make sure Some dreams might not it aren't supposed maybe <laughs> some dreams aren't supposed to come come true. Eh? You know, like it's just like <laughs> be careful what you wish for, right? Yeah, somebody just, might send you one for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it to the professionals here. All right, back right. a little bit on that moment. <laughs> Oh, that's 
so cool. Okay. Man. Was, like, he, I think I remember seeing a short on this, like a tutorial that he did. It was a quick tutorial. And I, like, you can produce the, you know, the, I know the mechanics of that. Mm-hmm. The, still no idea how he's making that trill happen and getting all the other stuff behind that. That is so immensely difficult to do. I have an idea. You have an idea? No, please, please. Yeah, and it's so interesting because it is happening, like that can't be a glottal reattacking. It's happening much too fast, much too fluidly. It's not disturbing the source of the sound. So it has to be something higher up in the airflow that's creating that little like uh, break in the pattern of sound. I think because his tongue, it didn't look like the tip of his tongue was trilling, I think that it's a uvular art. And I think the reason he did the gargling. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Uh, But that's complicated. But he, the way he's working with his vocal apparatus, he's frequently using multiple sound sources at the same time. So he's really, really good at at being able to essentially control that airflow so it can keep going by all of those sound sources, keeps creating sound. So if he used the uvula in it. Yeah. It would create that effect. That's <sighs> might might be why he gargles right before. That's way to go. That's yeah. Couldn't have said it better myself. I want to go back oh, though God. because I want to look at his. I want to look at what he's yeah. doing with his face. Okay. Okay. So right. and then he releases the tongue there. So he's got oh. the. Oh man, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. It's like it, it sounds like he's got like high phonation behind that too. Like it, like it, it like even there uh-huh. because I, ooh man, that's a hard nut to crack. One more time. Ooh. So that sounds to me like it sounds like it's high constriction. Okay. So not it doesn't sound like I don't think I hear the true folds in there. Yeah, I wish um, I could see his his larynx. Oh like, my gosh. you know, that would be that would be awesome. It's so hard to actually see. Yeah. This is like the problem with yeah. vocal research of well, first of all, it yeah. there was a big thing against harsh vocals for a long time. So yeah. getting funding to research harsh vocals was yeah. really, really difficult. Mm. But like it, it, you can tell on Will's throat camera, yeah. like you can see the top portion, but the moment yeah. you have a higher constriction involved, it's constricting. So you can't see right. as well below it and what's yeah. happening. So if we've got a ton of different uh, pieces of anatomy that are yeah. wacka wacka whacking, they're up high. Right. Um, even if you get your false folds, like those are still higher than your true vocal folds. So it's really actually really difficult to see if the to true folds are there. To actually see it there. Yeah. There's okay. there's certain things that you can tell on the outside though, like just like based on larynx position. But that's mm-hmm. yeah, you're you're absolutely yeah. right. If there was only if there's only a way to actually see what's going on without things being in the way, that would be amazing. I'm sure there's got to be something in development. There's one way. That. I'm there's sure one like way. AI is gonna come in and make that happen. Yeah, getting the camera yeah. in position really 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 tough. Yeah, needles that show muscle activation. Oh. That's possible. Oh. <laughs> oh man. Oh, it's is it worth it? I, yeah. It'd be worth it. Yeah. I, I, I'd, I'd totally. do it. Totally. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I'm a masochist. Like, you know, it's like, <laughs> whatever, needles, let's go. Yeah, really, really <laughs> tiny ones that don't actually hurt the singer, of course, but conditional muscle activation. But nice. it's other singers that allow that are few and far between. Oh, okay. So you, you're on the, the, the short list of singers. The very short list, <laughs> yes. And needles, like, for, like, blood work and stuff like that, they're like, eh, but that, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Amazing. What's wrong with you? What's with all anyway. these guys who have like massive tats and, and then they're like, like oh, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> Shall we keep going? Yeah, let's catch up. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Sounds like an alligator. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Got so like it's something that I, I that I always get this misconception, and I'll, I'm I'm like a broken record where it's like when you hear this <laughs> that type of sound, it's not low in the in the in the phonation. It's like so. Let's break it down really quick, mm-hmm. and then you can provide some mm-hmm. further analysis. So <laughs> starts at <laughs> low larynx position, <laughs> and then the tongue. You can hear the third frequencies. 
So the way that you move the tongue, the way that you move the mouth around will make an impact on the perceived sound. So, and the phonation, ah, 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 at least in lower vocalists, it's not as low as you might think. It's not like uh, Batman voice. That's what you want to avoid, <laughs> especially if you're looking for power. Look for the sub frequencies up in the upper vocal tract to make that impact. Alex is is showcasing that perfectly here. So if you're going for a low guttural, use that as your bass. What do you think of that? That's cool. It sounds really, really good for you. Like it sounds yeah. incredible. And, and with it feels Alex's great. Alex's tone, he's got so much complexity in the yes. sound. So you know that there's multiple things going on. Right. A lot of times when I see people starting in harsh vocals, like I say just like, don't, don't try to add the true folds at first because the moment right. that you start doing that and you try to get the harsh sound using the true folds, that's when you get damage. Right. So if you can separate the two things, that's good. So like yeah. what you're saying, I feel like is the next step above that. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. No, that makes sense. So like, you know, pr producing like a false chord, <sighs> getting that, getting, you know, it, familiar with that sound and then also the uh, fry sound that is something that is where you should start if you're just getting started with this the phonation just let that be get the get the upper vocal tract sounds down first before you go into providing that pressure that's an excellent point sweet so thank you for making that yeah no it sounds yeah. great on like the way you did it just sounds like really great though thank you yeah i've been working on it i've been, <laughs> I've been obsessed for like the last two years like trying to figure this stuff out it's been a lot of fun People should be obsessed with making weird noises. <gasps> yes. Okay. It's a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I love how he's using his finger So in that part there where he's yeah. bringing in the like actually really clear phonatory moments, yeah. I feel like that is a really good indication of where his pitch might be Yeah. without without adding the harsh on top. Yeah, yeah. So let's listen for that. Well, let's... And it's exactly what you said. It's pretty yeah. high. Yeah. Right around there. Like right around there. Mm -hmm. So it, it there's a bit of a there's a bit of an up and down that's going on there. So it, like it's it's not as it, like you don't want to like pick a pitch and be like okay I have to stay on this pitch. No, it's going to fluctuate. Just use that as a especially. And I mean again, if you were just getting started. This is the next step. Mm -hmm. next you, step. you work with the upper, upper vocal tract stuff first before you start doing this. Um, the phonation. Oh, I lost my train of thought. Oh my God. What was I saying? Phonation is, <gasps> yes. is high. Okay, yes, the phonation uh -huh. is high. Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. So work with a, a, a reference point. You want to work with a reference point. Like that. Not necessarily set in stone that you have to hit an F4 or anything like that. It's within a spectrum. Let it slide up and down. And Alex is doing that too. It's like... <laughs> That's what's happening. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Let's go. on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's strong. He's strong. <laughs> I do the exact same thing. I love the instrumental there. Yeah. Okay, just check out like the support for these two sounds. I think this is yeah. super, super important if you look okay. at how their body is. Uh, I've been watching harsh vocalists, especially on like how much tension they have. Ah. Um, Yes. Because I'm persuaded that I see a little bit more throat tension, especially on the really, really powerful things. Yeah. And I think I've I've seen very, very successful harsh vocalists that have done this for quite a while to no detriment of their voice. I'll see them have a little more tension here. And that mm. I think that that is external laryngeal tension, not intrinsic. So that would mean that we're not really interfering with the stuff that's more tender. Mm. Of course, you want to get as, rid of as much tension as you can. Yeah. But there's stuff that is that can be beneficial to the sound or the phonation you want to make. Yes. And that's the, mm -hmm. I, I want to add to that. Mm -hmm. Essentially, the way you want to look at your voice, especially if you're going into extreme vocals, your, your body is like a car. 
okay? It can redline once in a while. You can get up <laughs> into the red line to go 200 miles per hour, but you can't stay there. So you got to make sure that you you shift gears and get back into a, a stable spot. You yeah. can push the car. And you can go, you can redline, but don't like go into the ditch too. They, like, right. Don't crash I like to it say, You can go to 98%, <laughs> maybe once in a great while, but never go to 100% ditch. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great point. red line. Yes. I like that. But also, like, let's just check out his shoulders in these yes. two parts as well. Yes. That shows us the support all the mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And you can tell there's so much more built up air pressure. Mm -hmm. He actually is using some very, very strong lower body to help support oh, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. And there's a difference Maybe. between, like, some people when they do this, they're like, I'm going to get all my air out. And there's yeah. some people that say strong and they're actually supporting their air rather than trying to just squeeze it out. Oh, it's, and I'm much more the latter than the former. I'm a much bigger fan of that because there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's so many benefits to using this huge network of muscles to support what you're doing, no matter what your discipline is, whether it's clean vocals, you know, extreme vocals, whatever. Having this structure nice and proper, it's like thinking of it like a thinking of thinking of it thinking of it <laughs> like a skyscraper you know like standing up nice and straight that using this as a skeleton for all of this movement and activity down here to support what's going on up here so nice. yeah nice. absolutely skyscraper. yeah and isn't it interesting that it's like he goes from like this ooh to ah. Yeah. Yeah. And that really shapes the overtones. The the mouth right. shape greatly, greatly affects the sound. Even, yeah. even more so, I think, in extreme vocals than Queen's. Yeah. Absolutely. But I... It's interesting, when I heard the music video version, I mm -hmm. thought that there were more layered vocals in there, but I'm hearing more that he's actually just got so much complexity, meaning so many multiple yeah. sources, I think, yeah. um, that he probably has less layering inherently than I ever imagined. Yeah, it's crazy. There's, there's people that have, you know, everybody has haters, right? <laughs> you know, that's doing something special. Um, People were just like, oh, you're layering. Oh, it's just layered. They're not actually going that low. And then he did a demo that went viral and of Demolisher, I believe, where he was just sitting in his living room and it was just like, whoa, dude. He was doing that off of a phone. And, <laughs> yeah. So just I to love that. prove them all wrong. So prove there you wrong. go. Prove, prove them wrong. Yeah. Perfect. Very nice. Air guitar. Air guitar. <laughs> Yes. Oh, that's like probably my favorite part. I love that part of that yeah. of the and just to see him do that like in the one take. Because uh -huh. <gasps> the code switching is happening <gasps> so drastically and rather oh, quickly. God, yeah. yeah. So like, yeah, it's like and that's and his tongue position, getting that. Uh, it's it's like it's all oh this is so amazing and he's good, like and the fact he goes on like from uh, da 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 uh, it's like and he's doing such a great job with it too it's just oh my god and it's so yeah. powerful it's really so powerful. powerful I've heard oh. that he's actually one of the loudest uh, extreme vocalists out there Have you seen hit, like footage of him at festivals? For this song, uh -uh. take the take the microphone away, away. and scream <laughs> at the crowd. You can hear him. <laughs> That's cool. And then he hits his head with the microphone. He's yeah, uncertain. Beastly. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. He's a beast. Wow. He'll say otherwise. He says like I'm just a you know, no dude. You're a beast. He's like he's like you're a, a fuzzy like teddy bear beast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, no, he is super nice. He is super nice. Had a, a chance to meet him briefly at Blue Ridge Rock Festival, um, oh. uh, 2022. Oh, that's good. Yes, 2022. <laughs> 2022. 
2022. <laughs> we're not going to talk about this year. No. Okay. We're not. Okay, let's keep going. Let's go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, this is another perfect example of high, uh, of relatively high mm -hmm. phonation or comfortable phonation and all of this guttural stuff going on in between, like it, mm -hmm. on top of it. So like, it's so hard to hear this, but it's actually right about, his floor is right around an A3. So like, and I'm, I, I biffed that one there, but like you know, so. <laughs> I love but you yeah. use the word biffed. I know, sorry. right? I'm so the pee -pee yeah, thing. but <laughs> <laughs> tubular. Um, <laughs> so that right there is what's happening behind all of that, and the subtones. Once you lock in those subtones, if you're at that level where you're like trying to figure out how to do a guttural, and you've got the ah uh, down, and you got the wow down, yes, the next level, getting this. Manipulated Stuff and in here. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, I, I really think yeah. tons of, of mouth manipulation is essential. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Great use of the teeth. I really like looking at the engagement in the face. Yes. And there are times when he's, I mean, we don't see his forehead terribly well because of the hat placement, but you can totally see that he's using his whole face to get into sound. I think sometimes people get habits where they uh -huh. always have a furrowed brow or something like there can be things that uh -huh. people just always have when you sing that's that's a crutch that's not a good, yeah. good expression yeah but here it's, he gets into yeah. them to become even more extreme with his shaping right right i do think that there is a benefit to using your facial muscles to mm -hmm. animate certain things with within the upper vocal tract that it's connected to you just don't want to get stuck in one place yeah that's what i tell my students you can furrow you can do all kinds of animation within your face just do not allow yourself to get stuck and make sure that the movement is deep enough within your instrument and i go into more detail about that in my courses and, and my one-on-ones and stuff like that yeah so yeah you were coaching yeah. uh demystifying singing my the, my that. intensive class at one point and you it's came correct. in and you did the guest coaching for it and uh, I saw you working with some students in there and saw you working on the expression and saw yeah. how quickly people were benefiting from that. Yes. So you're like yes. super, super pro at that. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. It's been something that I've been doing for years now. I'm That's obsessed awesome. with it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Move your face. Move your face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh. Oh. <laughs> I could have sworn that that moment was layered when I heard it before. That's nope. not layered. Nope. Such a beast. That is savage. Savage. Oh my god. Like, what's his name? The guy who sings um you say in a Hamilton, the one that does the King George. And oh, that has yeah, a spell yeah, coming yeah. out of his mouth. That was oh my gosh. Yes. That's amazing. Embrace oh the spit. Oh my gosh, embrace the spit. You say the bruise. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I want to hear an extreme version can of that. That'd be oh, hilarious. My god. Wow. oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, can you can you imagine though? Because I will go <laughs> your present baby! <laughs> I would die of laughter. To remind you of my love. <laughs> and then just go pure like operatic on the da-da-da-da. Da, 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 da. No, no, you take it. I mean if you no, want to, I don't know. I think they'll pick the mic. But he looks rabid. He really looks rabid here. Yeah. It's yeah. incredible. Amazing. Way to embrace it. Yeah.
And I want to see the whole spit thing again. Yeah, right. Boy, is it disgusting. There's even a little, like, leak that happens in the sound. Foaming in the mouth. How metal can you get? Boy, is it disgusting. So good. Wow, talk about using spit as a sound. Dedication. <laughs> right? I like the... It, it's so, so funny when we looked into Will's throat again and, yeah. and uh, I remember at one point he was like, what is that stuff? And I'm just like, hey, it's your spit. It rattles around. It contributes yep. to phonation. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Make sure it's not globby. It's like oil in, it's like oil in the engine. Yes. Water. Yes. Make sure you do it. <laughs> Constantly. Well, that's too far back. <laughs> <laughs> been hanging around his dog too long. I don't care, it's awesome. Wow, wow, that was great. Yeah, huge, okay. a, such a huge spectrum of frequencies he oh, gets there. Oh my gosh, yes, okay. Ah. So. The fact that he's saying an E, okay, on the word fear, primal, that E, he's making the E with his tongue and just really, really leaning into that subtone frequency stuff there. And the fact that he's able to make, because most people associate extreme vocals with just going and sounding like Cookie Monster. The fact that he has a high subtone, like a treble, like a just shows an in an insane amount of skill in regards to getting those brighter frequencies to come forward. He's been doing this throughout this entire video. <laughs> it's so cool to witness. That's why I love one takes because you can see I'm, this stuff. I love so it. Cool. I love it. It's so yeah. it's so incredibly useful and informative. Yeah. <laughs> really great example of how the filter so I always yes like, I always yes. Like to talk about um, vocals in a source filter theory uh, approach meaning that you have a source of sound yep. and then something that's filtering the sound through it and so yep. a lot of times Phil will say something like subtones and he's talking about different kinds of filters yeah and here you can see how his mouth shape changes he's keeping the same source but he's moving his filter yes <laughs> Yeah. That's so good. One more time. Yes. Perfect. More spit. You. <laughs> Goodness. You do. <laughs> you can believe that. <laughs> Well, that was fun. And gooey? And gooey. <laughs> Full of saliva, yes. And barbarism, it was lovely. Oh, it was so yeah. cool to analyze it, not just by myself, but with a dear friend along for the ride. So Elizabeth, thank you, thank you so much. I love your insight into it. Yeah, thank you, likewise, that was awesome. <laughs> so, if you wanna see more music breakdowns, I'm going to point you to the playlist. I'm gonna put a card up here, Click on that, description down below. The original is in the description as well, so go check that out. The playlist will also be at the end of this video as well. Thank you. Yeah, it's gonna be somewhere, somewhere on here. Make sure, yes, click on that. <laughs> Always remember that practice makes progress, and with that, you can go and find your voice. Take care, until next time. Peace. <laughs>